Welcome to our fifth edition of our talks at Biva Pavilion. My name is Nada Corey. I am a founder and the president of the Joseph P. Corey Foundation, as you can see. Uh, and um, we are all about educating and empowering people in wellness and well being. So, reminding ourselves that we are the captains of our vessel and we can uh, affect how our bodies respond by treating it properly, whether it's with food, with uh, how we think, and also with what we surround ourselves with. What do we put on us, in us, and around us, basically. My background, um, I'm originally Croatian. I was born in Croatia and was so fortunate to be growing up in the countryside with my grandparents, my maternal grandparents. So. Uh, the gift that that gave me was the gift of connecting to mother nature to the earth and to life as is in the essence of that so that has stayed with me forever uh, and obviously has led me to what i'm doing now trying to share that wisdom with you all and with the world and we are doing a lot of uh, uh, educational things, but we're also planting gardens with children at schools and parks. We have a garden at, actually at the Riverbend Park at the homestead in Jupiter, and that's a collaboration with a parks and recreation organization, as well as is this, uh, this series that we are doing. So what have we learned so far um, uh, in these lectures? We have learned how to plant, where to plant, how to tend to then our plants that we have planted or our gardens and uh, you know what what is a good thing to use uh, and what is not we want to stay natural so we are uh, steering away from any kinds of uh, you know pesticides and chemicals uh, in, in any form of shape nature offers all that in itself we just need to relearn and apply it accordingly so uh, that's what we have learned so far, as well as let thy food be thy medicine. We had actually a guest speaker here. She is a, a homeopathic or um, natural doctor that practices ancient Persian medicine, as well as she studied the Western medicine, but she is practicing the Persian medicine or the uh, holistic medicine, which is all about let thy food be thy medicine. So she was teaching us about the importance of combining the food properly and what does that do in our body then therefore and the benefits of that. So um, that was our last time and every time we have also uh, offered some little uh, gifts to you where you could um, work in creating your own little poultice. You know, we, we use the citrus, we talked about the vitamin C and how you can use citrus and the vitamin C for your own benefit, but also how you can use it in uh, diffusing it, you know, having it. Um, we, we, what did we do? We used an orange or a tangerine and we poked it with some um, cloves, right, and created a beautiful little natural kind of diffuser. And you can hang it then in your closet and so on. And we can do that with many other herbs, like with lavender and, and whatever, whatever other, you know, uh, things that you like in the sense. So that's what we have done so far. And it was a natural kind of flow to get into today's topic, which is uh, the nose leads, right? We have five senses. So one of our senses and sensories is our nose, through which we can smell and uh, obviously the scent has a lot of um, effects on our behavior, on our mood, on whether we are, you know, hungry or uh, appetite, whether it's a stimulant or the other way, uh, whether we're anxious and we want to calm down. So I'm sure that you all are aware of some of these, uh, uh, these effects of, for example, lavender and peppermint. Everybody knows lavender and peppermint, right? So, but there is many more of, of, these, uh, of these things around. So, um, so how does smell affect us? Obviously, it can affect us emotionally. It can affect us in accordance to choosing our food. And it also has 
the oil, essential oils and aromatherapy, they have a health effect on us as well. So basically what we're doing, we're eating with our fifth sense, which is smell. Okay, using our senses of smell is, an important, is a very important as well for evoking memories <laughs> and emotions. A lot of times we eat from memory and the emotion connected to that, right? It reminds us of our times back when we were at home or with our you know, families. Yes? Yeah, they say the sense of smell is more closely connected to memory than any other sense. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, um, emotions. And the emotions, yeah. It gives us also clues as to whether we may or may not like something, okay? So it can stimulate appetite or it can deter us from something because it's connected to emotion and a memory as well. Okay, so um, history of aromatherapy. Maybe I will turn uh, this over to my friend Sandy. Sandra Bologna is our guest speaker today and she is um, uh, an essential oil user, aromatherapist. She also was a counselor. She has many hats uh, that she uh, can come from. So I would like to, to, uh, for her to introduce herself and also to tell us the story of aromatherapy. I mean, we can work together. We will work together. So, so that's uh, yeah. Thank you, Nada. All right, Sandy. Well, go ahead. Well, I'm Sandra Bologna. I yes, I'm a retired educator, but I'm still teaching. Hi. Hi. Pam. Janet. 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 You know them too? Yes. How about that? Yeah. Okay. So welcome everyone. And I'm very happy to be here in the fresh air with some people. And uh, yes, as Jan knows, I'm in aromatherapy. have been for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And um, just to give you an example, uh, this wasn't planned, but when I was putting up the sign, I cut my hand. I felt it, but I didn't see that it was cut. I just had a pinch. But I now have a pinch and it's bleeding. So it stopped bleeding, but I had essential oils with me. So I applied whatever oils I had with me and it stopped the pain and it stopped the bleeding and I'm letting it dry before I put a Band-Aid on to cover it. What did you use? Whatever I had. What did you use then? I had some roll-ons oils. I had these that I hang in my purse, I had one called Calm, which has CBD in it, and I have one called Breathe Again with Stung for breathing, and then I realized I had another one with called Thieves. These are blends of oils, and Thieves was um, a very interesting oil because during the plague, how many thousands of years ago was that? Well, long time ago, right? It was in the what, 15th century, right? Yeah, 15th century. Um, we in a plague. We're in a plague. Well, in the plague, during the plague, what happened? People were dying, and um, these thieves, the, the, the reason the oil is called thieves, I get it out here, is because these uh, spice traders, these people were uh, put these spices together and um, stole from the people after they, they didn't get sick. When they got captured, they gave up the recipe for a lesser punishment. Therefore, the, the, the oil is called thieves. And in thieves is um, clove, which is the highest antioxidant herb. And um, then there is lemon oil, which comes from the rind of the plant. So when you, or the fruit. So when you, um, for example, would juice your lemons, if you dry the rind and then shred it, which you might have an opportunity to see that later, uh, it, you can, it's very fragrant and it's what they make lemon zest from. So there's a lot of medicinal and high bioflavonoid properties in the rind of the lemon. So don't throw them away. 
and uh, what else is in here? Cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary, which is it. plant. Oh, it smells so good. Rosemary. So I, I cut a bunch of herbs from my garden. And uh, you will have the opportunity to uh, take whatever you want and smell them and take them with you and cook with them or whatever you want to do. But continue, sorry. Yeah, so the thieves oil was the key and I used to take it and put it inside airplane vents and I like to get in early and put it on my airplane vents and, and then people said, what do you do? And I said, I'm preventing the germs from getting to me. And so they said, do mine. You know? <laughs> And so that, and now there's a whole line of products that they make with household cleaner, hand sanitizer, spray, mints, whatever. So I carry that with me. And so now I'm all good. So that's all aromatherapy applied on a regular basis. From right? plants. From plants. From plants. And there is a history to aromatherapy, correct? So even back to the Egyptians, they and all the ancients they have all used uh, herbs and they have used uh, they've distilled the herbs and they've used the oils or they have diffused them whether they would have you know you, you all know incense right right whether whether it's used in the church right when they swing that in uh, and, and go around and it was meant to basically what was it meant to to um, to kill lift, off whatever lift the spirits and to lift the spirits so it had an emotional and it has ceremonial but it also had a health effect as well yes. so they were protecting themselves and they were also what were they doing they were you know uh, getting the evil spirits out right Correct. so Correct. that was sacred yes. frankincense right. and so on so that's what they used to do and that's where the thieves story comes from as well right because that was in the middle ages that's right. and there was the plague and these guys they saw an opportunity where they can get rich, right? Quick rich and get all that goody stuff and all the jewelry stuff from, from all the people, but uh, not get exposed to that. So that's why they covered themselves with this, with this combination of oils so they did not get sick, but they got rich. Well, the, the other thing is that the oils come from many parts of the plant. So what we have here are the leaves and, and stems. There's also fruit which we mentioned the lemon, which would be the rind of citrus oils are made from the rind of the plant. Those are the only oils that actually have a shelf life of let's say five years. They don't go bad. These oils don't, yeah, if they're from the plant or the roots, there's no shelf life on them. They last forever. That's why when they went back to King's Hut's tomb and they found these big urns full of oils for how many thousands of years and they were still good. They maybe had, um, condensed. In other words, they uh, get a little thicker, more like a, uh, a paste. Molasses. Yeah, thicker uh, over thousands of years, which your oils will if you don't keep them sealed tightly. But then the, they're made from roots and they're made from petals in a, in a case of a absolute. Rose. So if you have your rose oil and your florals those are not, those are distilled a little bit differently, not from steam distilling, and they're a different type of um, product. And then there's the resin, which is what frankincense and sandalwood are, and there are other resins. And what happens, just like you get a sap from the tree, and then that is, is distilled. So there's different parts of the plant. But I think of essential oils as the life force of the plant. Just as your blood is to you, the oil is to the plant. It is a life force giving. What does our blood do? Our blood delivers nutrients to the cells, oxygen, and whatever else we need. So the essential oils do the same in the plant. And actually, it does the same thing in us. So when you eat plants, when you use the ascent, and so if we lived in a beautiful, pristine Garden of Eden, we just, and we had all the plants we needed outside, we go outside and just get the fresh plants, put them in our food, squeeze them, put them on our skin. But um, now we have them in bottles so that we can have, this one drop is very powerful. Right, Nada? It's concentrated. So 
we have, uh, and, we, and that's what we are encouraging, you know, uh, plant your own garden. If you have a, a spot, if you have a pot, <laughs> if you yeah. have anything, just pot. plant, yeah, pot, plant, you know, plant Absolutely. whatever you can and use your fresh herbs in your daily cooking. And it doesn't matter which ones you have, whatever you have, whatever I have access to, I put in my food. That's it. Or you in your smoothie, you know, in your yes. daily juicing. Mm -hmm. That's another way uh, yeah. of consuming it in natural form. When we cook things, we kind of destroy a lot of the nutritional components of, of our food. So if you can use it fresh, the more fresh you can use it, the least, uh, you know, uh, cooked away goodies are uh, available to you. So with the oils, we definitely have it uh, in the purest form and you don't, uh, the distilling does not destroy those components, okay? It just extracts them and makes them more consistent, right? It makes them yes. more condensed. Yes. So. Yes. Well, it's, 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 con it is it's concentration. Con but let me make one thing perfectly clear. Make sure, if you're going to go out and say, oh, Nada and Sandy told me about these essential oils. Oh, here's so-and-so that you plug into the wall and it has essential oils. Uh-uh. They're not essential oils. Okay. Those are, let me clarify the types of essential oils there are. There are perfume grade, which you know that you'll buy in the store that's perfume. There's food grade that you would get that are extracts, okay, in the grocery store. And there's therapeutic grade. These are therapeutic grade. I can drink them, okay? I can take them internally and I do take them internally. But there's also another type and that's synthetic. That means made in a laboratory. If it's made in the laboratory, what would be the difference, do you think, of something that emulates nature but it's not from nature. If you did it, put it on your skin. It what do you think? Pardon me? It doesn't give you the nutrients that you need. Right. So it might smell the same. It might fool you. But it's going to, could be a reaction. So people say, oh, I'm allergic. <laughs> well, you're not a, probably allergic to the natural thing. You're probably allergic to the chemical thing. And um, I remember going into a dental office um, and these things were plugged in the wall and I had to unplug it while I was waiting and I said, I'm not gonna get surgery here. We have every, in every room. And the woman in charge of the office really thought that she had good oils in there. She thought that it was the real thing and she was grateful to me for educating her on that. So you need to know, is it natural? And if it's got a, if it's probably advertised on television or in a magazine, I mean, big time name, it's probably not. So just understand that that's the difference. And the difference is in the chemistry. The natural chemistry of the essential oils or the plants is like our chemistry, our body's chemistry. So that chemistry bend, melts together. If you have a, a, a synthetic uh, chemi chemical thing, it will not melt with your, it, there will be a reaction, you know, because our body knows what is good for us, so it mm -hmm. will kind of reject it. And that's why the adverse reactions would happen probably, right? So, uh, yeah, the, chemi the chemical structure of the essential oils and the plants is complementary to ours because we came of the earth. Our, our whole body's structure and chemistry is as is in nature. Compatible. We're compatible because we're from nature, we're made from nature, and so are the plants and the, yeah. and the oils. And I remember I had a roommate, um, and she used to wear this George, remember Giorgio perfume? Remember that perfume? And it was real popular, and she bought it like it was a copy. You know, they made these perfume copies? So I don't know if Giorgio had real perfume in it. I mean, if you're going to get some perfume at the, at the department store, and it's made from real essential oils, it probably is okay to wear. But most of it is not. So I know I have to hold my nose going through any most department store. And she used to wear this. This is before essential oils. This is like 30 years ago. I've been using oils for 21 years. 30 years ago or something. I couldn't, I, she had to go in her car. She, she could not bring that perfume in, in my house. So um, 
And now I know why, because it was synthetic. What you see in health food stores for essential oils in the brown, dark bottles are those the real. They wouldn't be well, synthetic. Well, they are essential. They're, they, well, there may be synthetic in them. You have to know the brand. And I didn't bring my, um, I have a brochure that tells you the brand. Uh, so what what they do, some some do. Most of them, they should be okay. They should the be okay. The only way you can see in the store then the difference between the uh, the real and the make believe, the fake, would be by name brand. Chances are, if you go into TJ Maxx or Marshalls and those, no. they're Health they're they're five dollars. Forget it. Health the food. health food store is going to have a different grades that they're going to be. Therapeutic. They're, they're, I don't know that they're therapeutic. And you have to look at the label um, because some are made for internal use. Ones I use, I don't want to put anything on my body that I can't put in my body. Yeah. Okay? And if they say for topical use only, there's a question mark, which I could not answer because I don't know the product. Where do you find the therapeutic oils? Well, you can get my. What the type of stores would have therapeutic? I don't. They scattered. I don't know. I. You can contact me, and I can send you some references. Okay, if you're interested. So, um, what do we have here, Sandy? Oh yes, we have we have essential oil for everybody. <laughs> and what is that? Maybe we have it matching in the plant. Okay. Box. So what most of you are going to get is rosemary, one of my favorites. And so we have an essential oil sample back here for you, which is quite a few drops, actually. So if you just put a drop, that's all you need. It's stronger than you think, okay? And rosemary is probably not one I would put in my mouth. I would put it in my food, maybe a, you take a toothpick, okay? Yeah. And put the toothpick in there and put the toothpick in, the, in the, what you're cooking. That's enough. That's how powerful this is. One drop of peppermint tea is in equal to 28 cups. We'll make 28 cups of tea. But I just usually, like if I, if I have peppermint on me and I go to a restaurant, I put one drop of peppermint in there and that's it for the tea. You don't need anything else. And this is oregano. And we have oregano in here and we have peppermint. Yep, we have peppermint somewhere in here as well. And I have a little lavender. Question. Yes. Oregano is very antiviral, anti, yes it is, but a clove is higher, so a clove, the, the thieves blend with the oregano is very, very powerful, oregano is very strong, and uh, the, the, um, there's different, one's a, one's a blend, okay, so there'd be five different oils in there, and oregano is a single oil, okay, um, so what we have is um, little samples here that you can try. So I have printed out a, a nice write-up on the uh, rosemary, on oregano. Uh, did you get I another one? Time. Time. Okay. Do you have so. A stevia plant in there? No, I don't have a stevia plant in here. Yes, I, I do have dill. Look at this beautiful dill, beautiful. right? I have the rosemary, I have some lavender, and it's just about to bloom. This is one, one kind of an oregano. There's many kinds of oregano. This is that citrus kind of oregano, which is usually, it grows in the tropical countries. So a lot of, you know, people from uh, the islands would have this. And then I have parsley here and celery for my garden. Parsley is a, an amazing uh, herb, you know, like a, I remember my grandmother would say, this is a blood purifier, or if you eat a lot of garlic, chew on the parsley, it, you, you know, it will not, it will take away that pungent uh, smell from, from you. I have a little thyme here as well, so, um, and the oregano, the Italian oregano, right, this is what it looks like, so, so there's a difference. But nevertheless, it's all good, right? It's all beautiful herbs. This here in Florida grows like crazy. I got that. Right? You can just stick this. 
You can stick it? No? I cannot kill it. No. So you just stick it in the soil and it will it will continue to grow. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really, it grows so, just from that, huh? Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. So this is going to be available for you after we are done with our filming here. Now, Sandy mentioned something before using the rind of the lemon or using the rind of an orange or a grapefruit, right? So I don't throw anything away. I like to juice in the morning. I do my green juice. But I also uh, um, like a mixture of orange and grapefruit juice, you know? High vitamin C, uh, I like, you know, it's, it stimulates, it wakes you up. But I don't throw the rinds away after I've, I've uh, juiced my, my fruit. I use the rind. Of course, all, all my fruits and vegetables are organic. That's important. So they are not sprayed. I also wash them nevertheless in, in a solution of o ozonite water. I have a little ozonator and I put a bowl of water and I ozonate that water and I wash my fruits and vegetables in it. So if there is anything on it, it will, it will destroy it because uh, there's nothing bad that can exist in ozone. Okay, it's negative ions. So what do I do? So I cut my rinds with the white thing inside, right? I don't peel that off. So I cut the whole rind, the whole skin, and slivers. I have a dehydrator. I dehydrate that skin. And then when it's dry, which goes pretty quickly, like overnight or even sooner, and then what I do, I put it in my food processor or Vitamixer, you know, the special one that can grind, grind, grind uh, grains. And, and I get? pulverize it. <laughs> and I get, you know, pulverized citrus rind, okay? I love lemon pepper. Have you ever heard of lemon pepper? I love lemon pepper. I put lemon pepper on everything and anything, whether it's my salad or my fish or whatever it is, you know, any meal, I love lemon pepper. So I have a bowl now of this citrus rind that I've collected. I grind some fresh pepper in it. I have good Himalayan salt or natural salt I put that in there, I mix it, and guess what I create? My own lemon pepper. Fresh. Yeah. Ar so I know, yes, I know what is in it, okay? I know that everything that I've used is organic, all right? And there is no additive, okay? So no preservative. No preservative, nothing. Okay, so my gift to you, if you like it, is this today, okay? So that's just one way of what you can do with these things. With the herbs, you can dry them. Lavender, right, or rosemary, or any of the herbs. How do you dry them? You can tie them up in little bundles. You can hang them up in a, you know, like your garage or a dry, dark area, and they will dry. Clean them off the stems you know, crumble them, and you can create your own Italian seasoning or whatever seasoning you like with the herbs that you like. So that's, one, that's another way of doing it. You can dehydrate them, like I did with the rind, okay? That will keep the color more, you know, alive than if I dry them naturally. That will turn more brownish kind of, right? Um, and then again, you can crumble it and use it. You can put them in sachets as diffuser and put it in your drawers, in your closets, you know, uh, in your cars. Instead of getting that synthetic whatever smell they put in there, they always offer it, right? <laughs> put that in there. And yes. then you have your natural, you know, uh, scent that is not going to provoke any kind of allergic reaction because it is natural, okay? So, and it doesn't have any of the bad chemicals that affect us. I want to say something else. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can just, what you need to do with the citrus is take the meat out. Just take the part, you know, that still has the little things on it from the, from the lemon and the orange, the meat that you eat. If you clean all that out, it'll just dry in a day or two in the air. But if you leave that in there, that's going to attract, um, could, you know, hasten that. You, you, don't, you want it taken out, right? Or do you just, you dehydrate it. 
So if you don't have a dehydrator and you take that out, it will dry okay on its own. Just you put it in your oven on very low. You could do that as yeah, well. Yeah, just, just not too high, not above 120, I think, right? But if you leave the fruit meat in there and let, let it sit out, it could mold. So I like to use the whole thing because I know there is a medicinal component to that sure. wide rind inside the skin. It's very, very potent for you, and I know it very helps good. the body oh, you know, be prevent a lot of things, yeah. bad things, right. cancers, whatever the stuff it is. It has a very, very high uh, medicinal component in there. Bioflavonoids, super good for you right now. Very good for you. Yes, Ken? I was going to say, I have a Ninja Fumi grill, and then it just dehydrates by oh. it Try it. Yeah. He has a, oh, the, oh. Yeah, why don't you try that? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Do you have any questions of the topic that we just spoke about? I think you've been asking them along the way. But anyways, um, we are here. So, um, please check us out on the Foundation's website if you have any kind of further interest in, in you know, learning more about this. We have lots of educational videos on there even cooking classes they we call them cooking with nada classes we have sometimes a chef that comes and joins me and we do simple things uh, and recipes and those uh, people that i invite they are uh, you know they are educated in nutrition and health and wellness and i always poke them with questions so what does this what does this do in my body okay why are we putting this in what is it going to do in my body because um, you know, we need to know more about that. That will help us in combining our food properly and also address issues if they happen, okay? If you have a discomfort in your belly or whatever, what can you do? Do you chew on some mint, peppermint, or put a drop of that peppermint oil in your glass of water or something, or make a tea? Can we, Is can it gonna help? Can we talk about that? Because uh, yes. they might wanna know what, they're, what they got. I just realized we didn't Go tell ahead. them what they yeah. got. Okay, so we passed out oils. So uh, if you got what you, what you got, what are the properties you might want to know? Oregano, we talked very antiviral, antibiotic. Okay, and both oregano is that, and it has many, many more. I could read them to you, but um, peppermint is anti-inflammatory. It's um, brings clarity to the mind. Um, it's anti-spasmodic. That was the other, one person maybe got peppermint. Okay, you got the peppermint? It's very good for the head, it's good for pain, it's good for- Nausea. No, nausea, digestion, it aids in digestion. And a little, one drop of peppermint on the back of your neck, in the heat will cool you off like that. Oh, yeah. A drop in water, drink it, cools your whole body. Yeah. Okay. Rosemary is not only good for the mind, it's very aromatic, it's anti-tumoral, it's anti-cancer, it's anti-inflammatory, and it brings clarity to the mind. So rosemary has, it's, it's around, around the ball game here, everything. And then the other one, well, we did them all. Yeah. So basically, nature is the way to go. All right. So if we return back to the old ways and bring our energies together with what we are growing, it is going to reward us. So there is an energetic exchange, okay, with our plants. So I know that you've probably experienced this plant grew very well and this one didn't do so well. Well, where did you put your attention to? Okay, maybe you liked this one and you were kind of caressing it more and this one was left on its own. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, let's say orchids, right? If you leave them alone and you don't pay attention, all of a sudden they want your attention. So what do they do? They create this amazing blooms, right? Energy goes where attention flows. <laughs> so if we, if we go back to basics, to nature, growing our food as much as possible, paying attention where our food is coming from, that it is coming from a natural source. 
you know, we are becoming good stewards to our body as well as to nature. And that's the goal here because nature has obviously all the remedies that we need. You know, the, the trees, when they are affected by some kind of a fungus, virus, whatever the heck it is, it creates its own internal oil and its own internal protection and it will send that information through the roots to the other trees That's around right. it and they will now know what to do in order to protect themselves. It's, an immune system. it's amazing. It's really, nature is truly an amazing thing. So if we connect to nature more, if we connect more to our food and we eat consciously in gratitude, because this is a gift, right? I mean, how can the result be bad? It can't, it just can't. It's just, you know, that's how it is. It's so. amazing when you think about all the trees. If they just imagine, just for a minute, close your eyes and imagine all these trees underground are communicating with each other. It's alive. The life force. It's life force. And we're sitting in the middle of it. Yes, isn't that a beautiful At environment? All time. Yeah. How did this foundation start? Okay, How, why did I start the foundation? I started the foundation uh, six years ago. And I was in, uh, in, on my path of learning as much as possible about wellness and well-being, about healthy living and having a healthy body. Because, you know, there is no magic pill or magic person or anything there that will help you unless you help yourself. We know that. So we need to become better stewards to our body. I knew that. I learned that. So I explored and went to all kinds of different places and lectures to learn more and apply it on myself. And then I shared that. I, I, I created a few uh, health expos maybe 10, 15 years ago, New Jersey and here. I used my husband's company uh, to educate the people that work there to bring them more to health instead of fast food and whatever it's a trucking company but there are still people and you know what it took a long while but they learned they created a garden in the back of their warehouse and they brought their grandchildren and they said to me miss nadia can you just just tell me what i need to do and this is a woman that's maybe 50 something years old I have never put anything in the soil, and this is so much fun, okay? So that became my passion, and then my, my husband passed away. And I uh, applied as much as possible, as much as he would take from everything that I've learned to help him along the way. Okay, he passed away, my mother passed away, and you know, I lost a few very close, dear loved ones, and I said, well, how do I remember them? So I created Joseph P. Quarry Foundation in his honor and in his name with my passion of, of teaching people, you know, the skills, how they can then take charge and their control over the vessel that is our body. Okay, so my passion combined with the memory of my loved ones is how this was created. And that's why we're here today. Yes. Uh, isn't that amazing? Another question. Sorry. Um, I have been to Croatia. Yes. Do the people eat there like you're talking about here? The people there eat from their garden. Yes, they all grow their, their foods in their gardens and their, um, and their you know, fruit, fruits in the, in the fruit yards and stuff like that. So. There is, that's why, if you've been there, that's why the food tastes different than it tastes here, right? When you eat a salad in Europe anywhere, pretty much, it tastes different. When you eat a fruit there, it tastes different. Farm to table, right? It is. So there are farmer's markets everywhere. And what are they? There are those local people from the countryside. They bring in their goods, and then they sell them to the people in the cities, okay? And how... Is, is exactly what I'm talking about, right? So what I don't like about the inland people, like my family back there, they love meat, too much meat. So when I come there, they say, what are you gonna eat? Because I don't eat any meat. 
I said, well, aren't you going to make this and this salad and that side dish and so on? Don't worry. I'm fine. And then I make more. And guess what? They all eat it even more so. But they're stuck on their meat. <laughs> so anyways, I know that's, and you know what? That's, I think uh, we find that here too, you know, a lot, too much of that. And that's a completely other topic, you know. It let's is. stick to, to uh, the gardens and the nature, but there, we can make a talk on that, so, it as is. well. Because it's, yeah. you know, how do you treat your animals? How, where are they growing? What are they being fed? What are they being injected with? And so on and so on, you know. That's another component because that has an effect on the meat. So that's another one. But there's also the topic of what are you eating? Is it alive when, is mm -hmm. it alive? Yeah. Or is it dead yeah. when you're eating it? You're, you're eating for life. Think of that. That's why live, live uh, food is always giving you more life. And you feel better. You don't feel heavy. When you eat, um, you know, a steak or something, how do you feel? Right? You want to collapse. That's it. Because you can't. Yes, we had our, one of our lessons. It was the last lesson about that. But if, if there is interest, we have another lesson. And we can talk really talk more about food combining and what what certain combinations do in the body if that's your interest that's what we will do and our next lesson is the 15th of april and it's the sixth one which will complete the series so i hope you will come and maybe bring others and if uh, we have given you some um, uh, feedback as well which we would love for you to fill out also a little card with your name on it, we have raffles that we can draw, and we'll see who is going to get our little gift today is peppermint oil. What will your topic be on the 15th? If you like to talk more about food combining, that's what we will do then. Oh, so it isn't uh, an established... Because we have talked about all the components of growing, now we are in eating, harvesting, and then what does that do in your body and how you can, you know, uh, and then I would love for everybody to join us at some point and maybe create your own little creation and then maybe we can taste it. I don't know if that is possible, but that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Like a little potluck thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for today's class. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, Sandy, Thank for you, being here with it me. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody.